So Liz, one of the things that we, we've heard over the years is um, <clears throat> organisations saying to us, well, um, so these returners, so just, these are kind of, you know, what level roles are they coming, are they going to be coming back into? Um, and, and seem very surprised when we tell them that these returners have often clocked up 15 years experience before they've taken a break for caring reasons. Um, and, and Sharon just told us that the two returners she's got in her team are in quite senior management roles with big responsibilities. So, I mean, that, that's how, how do we overcome yeah, it's that? It's interesting, isn't it? I remember, I think one year we had a very senior broadcaster, I seem to think, once upon a time. And I think, yeah, oh, would, would they be interested in doing some admin or would they like to be on reception or would they like to do something that was completely not equitable with their experience and their and their skills? And I think you're right, Sharon, you know, a mum of, I'm a mum of two, they're much bigger now and six foot three, but when, <laughs> when you are being a mum and you're out for a period of time, and certainly Amanda, we have this on day one when, when sort of the confidence very often for these returners is, is pretty low. And I remember our very first session, we asked them, you know, what are you good at? What are your skills? And we had a room full of women saying, well, I can't really do anything. I don't know. I've not been at work. You can't do anything. So we completely reframe that around organisation, planning, finance, social secretary, you know, liaising with the school, negotiating the whatever, the nursery or whatever you've been doing. So really uplifting, uplifting their skills. I think it's really important that women, we're talking women here primarily, that women returners are recognized for the experience and the skills that they bring to the table. And yes, they've been out for a period of time. Give them some confidence that a program like ours gives them. Remind them of the world that they left behind, which is what we talk about on our program. Advertising has always been about targeting consumers just because it's called programmatic and different languages now entered the workplace you know, on a regular basis. Doesn't mean to say that we're doing anything wildly different from what was being done before. I think also, and certainly with women coming back from maternity leave, sometimes employers want to make life a bit easy for them. Please don't do that. It takes me an awful lot of effort to get myself to work. I don't want an easy job. I want to be coming in back to work to do something of value that brings me alive, that uses my skills and allows my contribution. So I think we've got to get over this. A gap is a bad thing. Mm. A gap isn't a bad thing. A gap is a is a good thing it doesn't diminish you it doesn't discount you in any way and perhaps we need to be a little bit more respectful around what people's experiences um, have been and how we can best use yeah. those and I, I could just going back to your point Liz about before about the sort of cultural shift almost that's needed internally I mean we're quite a small team we're less than 30 people um, so to have you know two returners an older returner and then lots of other working mums as well that have been in the business for quite a long time um, it, it's good for the whole, it's good for the, the ecosystem of the whole organisation. You know, everyone benefits from Absolutely. there being this inclusive environment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think you're right. I think there's still a bit of a way to go in terms of the buckets that we all tend to put people in. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I'd like to see, to see change. I think for us, the start was to encourage companies to look at the flexible first checklist, to just do a temperature check on how they currently are structured as a business. Uh, the next step is obviously just to make that a bit more sort of, you know, co company wide and the culture to change, um, just to make it easier. But it, but I, I think the benefit of, of including more and more returners in 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 a, in a workforce is that you know there are knock on effects for everybody. Yeah, because flexible working should be available to everybody. Yeah. yeah. And one of my questions to um, uh, well for both of you, but um, but Liz first. Oh, is this new hybrid way of working um, since COVID? I mean, what it's now the norm. Nobody comes into the office five days a week anymore. That should be good for returners, shouldn't it? It should be good. But what? But is it good? Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, COVID has had a lot of drama and a lot of upset. The upside of it. I think is that it has dis disrupted work in, in, a, in a good way. It should yeah. be in a good way. Yeah. And I was certainly excited um, at the very beginning when organizations were starting to really think about how they were going to work going forwards. 
that we should be addressing a whole number of, of items here, shouldn't we? You don't have to be London centric anymore. So all these requirements of, oh, we'd love to hire somebody from you know, the north of the country in another city, but we can't because it's so expensive and the travel and la la la. We should really be now blowing off all the restrictions around well, we can't have a broad talent pool because, you know, they're up in Birmingham and we can't do that anymore. Well, we can, can't we? So there are lots of things we now can do, again, if we're brave enough to embrace it and to do it. And I'm still not sure that I, I think we're still what Peter Drucker would say. We're still applying yesterday's logic mm -hmm. to, to, to today's problems. Mm -hmm. And that is is the worst thing as business leaders that we can do. Because yeah. in times of turbulence, it's not the turbulence that's the problem. It's applying yesterday's logic. So I always talk to business leaders around what is now possible. And there are many, many things that are now possible. And that's one of them. So and, the, and why I get passionate about that is certainly in advertising. I think we all do sit and we don't wish to, but I think we all sit in a bit of an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. People all look like us, sound like us, talk like us. And we quite like that because people like people who look like people. So uh, like ourselves. So a great, I think, who's not in the room is always a really important question to be asking. And because of this hybrid working and different ways of working, anything is now possible if we're prepared to open our minds to it. And I mm. still think we're wanting to get things back to where they were before, which really is bad <laughs> yesterday's logic. Um, and presumably this, this whole hybrid working um, should also be good for for men as well. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, interestingly, I know a lot of businesses over the summer, we did it ourselves, um, allowed people to work from anywhere. So, you know, we abandoned our two days in the office. We've currently got two days suggested. We won't go, it's not mandatory, but we like the whole team to be there on a Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, but in August, we said you can work from anywhere. And people were in France, America, you know, not having to take holiday to go away. Um, and so, yeah, to your point, well, to Liz and, and to Amanda, in terms of this impacting everybody, it, it, it truly does. I think, I think using the enormous transition that we've all gone through from the pandemic as a really positive thing and not try and go back to that, you know, default setting of presenteeism back in the office five days. Mm. Um, I, I know that a lot of C-suite are reporting that they have seen an impact on culture, collaboration commercial success from not being five days or certainly not being you know more than two um and possibly that is a, a nod to the trying to go back to the old ways of doing things i don't i haven't met one business yet that has hit the silver bullet or the sweet spot of the perfect scenario for hybrid working um but i mean it's it's still early days isn't it i think we're all still adjusting to what we've all been through um and I, and I completely agree with Liz. I think the solution is in just riding the, riding the waves until we, until we hit on that. Mm. Um, but, it, but in that process, we're, we're allowing for people to work and, and be employed in different places as well as doing different hours. And I think that's really exciting. Mm. 